Welcome back. He was one of the most electrifying baseball talents of the 1980s. Daryl Strawberry was the first pick in the draft because he was a six foot six, 200 pound athlete who could run and hit balls 400 feet. But his greatest success came off the field where he has beaten demons of addiction. He's now an author who lives in our town. And Daryl is our tonight's Cardinal Buick Sunday Conversation. I think that anybody who sees Daryl Strawberry say at a Schnooks in O'Fallon is thinking, wait a minute, why is that New York Met Daryl Strawberry in O'Fallon, Missouri? Yeah, I'm quite sure a lot of people do think that. And it's great to be back in Missouri. We went to Florida for a little bit. And, you know, St. Louis is just a wonderful place. I, I didn't realize that in my plan days uh, because we wasn't liked too much when I played with the Mets. You know, the Cardinals-Mets rivalry, rivalry was really real. So uh, I'm just glad to be back in St. Louis and living now. Just how intense was the rivalry between the Mets and Cardinals? Well, we, we loved Willie McGee. He was great, you know, but, um, you know, we didn't like Tommy Hurd. You know, Tommy Hurd was always stepping in and out of the box, you know, fixing his helmet, fixing his hair, you know, pulling on his uniform. And I think a lot of guys didn't like that. Uh, I've always liked Ozzie. He's always been a great guy, you know. I always liked Whitey. He was a great manager. So, you know, but there were guys over there that, you know, we just didn't like, you know, that twisted us the wrong way. And we just kind of like, wanted to beat them every time we faced them. When you look back on your career, do you think eight all-star games, four world championships, and a thousand RBIs, or do you think it should have been more? No, I never look back on it could have been more, you know, because my life was fractured. You know, I was broken, and I was playing baseball out of pain. And to be able to achieve that, you know, without being healthy, I would say was pretty incredible. If it was the healthy me, yes, there probably would have been more. But I can't look back and say that because – my life would take a turn for the better, you know, through my darkest, darkest nights of my life uh, of who I was and everything to be able to come to a place and be sitting here today and be the man I am today. I don't know if I would have ever been the man I am today had I played a, a long career and made more money. I probably would have thought I really had it all and would have never found the love of Jesus in my life. To fully appreciate where you are now, let's remember where you were. You woke up every day of your childhood with a father who said you would never amount to anything in your life. And finally, one day, you had to stand up to him. Yeah, it was a night, another drunken night, him coming home and, and being abusive to my, our mother. And we just woke up and my brother Michael said, why don't you get out of here and leave us alone? He pulled out a shotgun, said he was going to kill the whole family. Me and my brother Ronnie went into action. Ronnie grabbed a butcher knife. I grabbed a frying pan. And my mother looked at us and she was a little lady and she looked at us like, get out of this house. And she wasn't planning. We knew she wasn't planning. And I, she made us get out. And I realized there that it could have been a tragedy in my life before I ever put the uniform on. Then at the end of his life, you go to him and ask for forgiveness. Tell me about that. And I went in there and like the Lord said, don't say anything about what your father did to you. Go in there and ask him for forgiveness for me keeping him out of my life. I said, you know, the Lord has changed me. Would you forgive me for keeping you out of my life and my, my career and from your grandkids? And I'm so sorry. And the tear rolled down his eye. He said, yes. And I just lost it. All these fascinating stories are in your new book, Turn Your Season Around. It's kind of a workbook, a self-help book. And you have many interesting definitions, like, say, the definition of sin. Well, my definition is for sin. It's a, you know, it's a self-indulging, you know, that we bring on about ourselves. You know, we live in it in a way that we think is never going to cost us. You can pick your sins, but you can't pick your consequences. And how would Daryl Strawberry like to be remembered? I would like my legacy to be remembered, not far as baseball, uh, that I became a, a man of faith and really went off to do some great things to help so many people and lead people to Christ and, and leave a legacy for my children that Jesus is Lord. That's the most important thing because that's what my mother left for me. And I think that's why I'm sitting here today, Frank, because of my mother prayers.